going to be tying a modified purple peril, uh, great to shoot summer steelhead fly, also a pretty good winter steelhead fly as well. Um, today we're tying it in a size 2, uh, this is a Tiemco 79.99, I've got some purple 6 uh uni thread, and use the self-threading bobbin real quick there, got her all ripped and ready to go. So we're going to start the thread behind the eye. We're going to make a nice thread base all the way down the hook shank. We're going to take that thread to approximately the barb. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut about a four and a half inch piece of uh, Lagerton uh, varnished oval tinsel. I'm going to tie that in right above the barb. I'm going to make three wraps as a tag. And then I'm going to take my thread and I'm just going to lock that down. Kind of pull it off to my side. I might, you might use your material clip on your vise just to kind of get it out of the way for the next step. I'm going to take uh, a small amount of the hackle fibers, uh, purple hackle fibers, and I'm going to tie those in as a tag off the back end. I'll kind of trim them down a bit, size them. And show us that feather bear every one more time and, sure, and how, is, you, how is, you did that. This is the uh, the tip, or the, excuse me, this is the butt section of one of the a tip from a previous fly. And I'm just going to take off a small section of the fibers here. This would probably be a waste material that you'd be throwing away. It's just a nice way to kind of use some uh, materials that, that would be wasted other otherwise. So I've got that tip tied in off the back. Uh, I've got a relatively new product for us called the uh, French Mini Flat Braid. This is lilac colored. I'm going to cut off about three inches of that. We're going to use this to make a, kind of the aft body. So I'll take my thread up to approximately the halfway point of the hook shank. I'm going to take that body braid and I'm just going to wrap that forward. tie that off. The next thing I'm going to do is, <clears throat> if you were uh, at home, you'd probably have to use a separate tool, but I've got a cool new uh, Marc Pettitjean bobbin here that actually has a built-in dubbing loop apparatus. Uh, on the camera right now, it'd probably be too small to see, uh, but I'll give a, a brief little demonstration. I'm going to take a loop. I'm going to tie in a loop approximately two and a half to three inches. I'm going to slide the bobbin down and catch it on a little tiny uh, guard, and that's going to open up the loop for me. I'm going to take some purple ice dubbing. I'm going to stick that in between the loop that I just created. Kind of slide it up by the hook shank. I'm going to spin my bobbin until I get a nice little noodle of dub. And I like to just take a, a dubbing brush and kind of rough it up just a little tiny bit. So this is the critical thing with this tool is you're either going to have to grab here and wrap it forward or watch your angle. The, the, the dubbing loop comes off at kind of a two point angle and if you just uh, slowly turn it without turning your wrist too much and keeping the bobbin relatively flat, it's not difficult, maybe sounds a little bit more, more so than it actually is. We're just going to wrap that dub up to the front. So at this point in time we can slip the dubbing loop off of the post. We're working with three lines here, so the dubbing loop is already tied off, uh, but we'll just go ahead and, and work the thread back just a little tiny bit. So now we've got this body, little plump dubbing on there. We're going to take a second, we're going to rib the body with that oval tinsel. Tie the tinsel off. tag is covered. Again, hit it maybe with the dubbing brush, pull some of those fibers out, give it that nice brushy breathing body we all like for steelhead so well. Uh, I'm going to use a Mets, uh, Mets soft tackle in purple. There's a good looking feather right here. Again, I'm going wide, webby, looking for something that's going to really put some uh, breathing movement into the fly when we fish it. 
Again, I'm going to expose that hackle stem. Tie that in right there where we finished off the tag. I'm going to use my hackle pliers. I'm going to make approximately three wraps of hackle. Again, we don't want so much hackle on this fly that it's going to prevent it from sinking. Uh, but we want enough that it looks you know, really alive in the water. Kind of classic steelhead wet fly style. We're going to take those fibers and we're going to kind of <clears throat> spread them down to the side, maybe make a wrap or two just to confine it. This is going to allow us to lay our wing in there a little bit more evenly. We've got a dyed purple squirrel tail here. Really neat stuff, very soft, a lot of, again, a lot of movement and life to it. Go to the stem, uh, to the tail, tailbone basically, uh, pull off a, a, an appropriate wing for the size of the fly that we're using. Summertime flows, you might go with a little bit sparser so that you can get the, that low water effectiveness measure it in there again just kind of get that wing essentially about even with the end of your tag trim it down just a bit more just taper that head make it nice and even looking we take our whip finishing tool. And there you have it, a finished low water type uh, modified purple peril.